morning, ladies and gentlemen. I'd like to get everybody's attention. The windows are very rude. They just want to update on us. They're slowing our program starting this morning. But I wanted to welcome everybody to the Caldwell Heritage Museum. I'm just curious, uh, have we got some folks here who've never been here before? Well, after the program today, if uh, you'd like, we'll, we'll take a uh, got a tour through the museum and show you our displays. And uh, if your time will allow that, I'll be glad to do that personally. My name is Jeff Spep. I'm the director here at the museum. Let me take care of a little, a few housekeeping details real quickly. Should we have an emergency, there are exits on the north side of the building. Of course, the front doors and along the north and south sides of the rear hallway. Uh, as most of you appear to have already found, the restrooms are through this door and to the right, should you require them. And feel free to help yourself with the coffee and pastries back there because me or the dog at home need it, not fatten ourselves up with it. So y'all eat them up. Our presenter today is Mr. Cecil Haynes. Cecil is a lifelong resident of Caldwell County, he was born and raised right down the road in Whitman. And uh, he uh, served for 32 years as a conservationist with the U.S. Department of Agriculture Natural Resources Conservation Services. He has worked with us very closely in the last few months here at the museum, coming up with ideas and how we could become more inclusive and draw more folks into the museum to see our collections. And for that, I'm very much appreciative. Uh, Cecil has also kind of agreed to help with uh, another program that we'll talk about a little later today that will start on exhibition here today and run through this weekend. So, rather than hold things up any further, I'm going to see if the computer will now cooperate with us. And you can go ahead and get started, Cecil. Okay. Everybody give Cecil a hand. <laughs> As many of you know, it uh, seems like every family or every individual sometime through their life collects something. It might be baseball cards when you're little, it might be baby dolls, anything else. Seems like I've, over a 60 year period, have collected usually four or five different things and I'll do one binge for a while and then I'll go on something else. But uh, I remember when I was small, my mom always showed us old letters and stuff when we lived in Whitnall and one of the letters I remember when I was small was a love letter to my grandmother, which was Ellen Nelson which we lived over on what is now Countryside Drive up uh, above the old Ideal Supermarket in Whitnall. And that always, in, it just, uh, I said, Grandma had a boyfriend, and she was always so old, you know, when I noted her that I thought that was just something, but it was postmarked from Whitnall, North Carolina, so that sort of, I think at a very young age sort of sparked me, but as far as really getting into the postal history of Caldwell County, this started probably 20-some years ago when I first got my first little letter it had a different uh, postmark and I started searching into it and I said well you know I thought well, Lenore just you know I've heard about the Hudson Post Office and Whitmore Post Office and Patterson and Granite Falls and I know Whitmore always had one and then I started looking up on it a little bit and, left, <coughs> and if you'll do the next one please it comes to find out that uh, in Caldwell County there were 76 post offices at one time and that just uh, sort of blew my mind because I said, first, why did they need all those post offices? Existing at the same time. Yes, yeah, almost the same Everybody time. Here okay? But anyway, uh, out of the uh, 76 post offices, as you can see, there's only uh, 51 of the mailings from the post offices that are known. So there's still 25 in the county that nobody's ever found a letter from. And like I say, I'll be showing you all the ones that I have. And like I say, they're quite extensive. There's probably I have personally in my own collection 40 some and statewide, like I say, there's 51, so they have about eight or nine that I do not have, but I have some copies of. Okay, we'll go to the next one. Okay. Uh, back when I was small, everybody talked, and I remember hearing this word cornerstone when I was very small, and they'd say, Mr. Wilson down at Hudson, everybody always referred to him at the general store down there at Hardware. He was a cornerstone of the community. But come to find out to me, you know, we basically need about three or four things to have a 
cornerstone or a place people want to move to in the county. And first of all, I always look at, a, I don't know why that, there it is, Little John's Church, about every community has a small church back then. And then second thing they'd have, they'd always have a place for the kids to go to school, and this is old Heartland School on the bottom left. And then they always had a little general store, and inside that general store you could also buy your staples, what my dad and mom always called your flour and your sugar and stuff if, that you didn't raise, but also there's a post office in that old store, just like there was in Todd General Store, and, and that was the old uh, place for you. Next. This is a map that was uh, taken probably uh, made in about the 1920s, 30s, and it shows some of the old post offices that were located here in the county, and I'm just going to tell about a few of them. And uh, one gentleman showed me one this morning, and I was really glad to see, and it was Mutton's. Mutton's was a small post office, and it was just there for a few years, but it was out on the Playmore Beach Road right close to the Playmore Beach itself. And then you have Hout Post Office, and that later became Mortimer Post Office. You had the Globe, the Upton, the Gregg Post Office. The Gregg Post Office is located at Carriage Flat, and now is part of Avery County. And then you had the High Brighton. I've never heard of the High Brighton Post Office, and I've never found a letter from High Brighton. And uh, Valmead was one, and it was there a long time, but I've still, nobody's ever found a letter from the Valmead Post Office postmarked. And like I say, you had different ones. Okay, next. Uh, we're going to do these sort of in order, and the first one I'm going to talk to you about is the Attico Post Office. Attico, most of y'all know if you're from Caldwell County, was up on Attico Road. It was right past where you uh, cross Wilson's Creek, and uh, there's a Miss Story that lives out there, and it was in their old, on their property, the little store, and it was called Attico. And like I say, it was there, you can see, for about 30 some years, and then it was closed. And it seems like from about the war time, 42-ish, 40, up into the 50s, most of these started combining into one or two bigger post offices. And just like this, when the mail was transferred to Lenore. And the postmasters, like I say, we'll just throw these up for a little bit, but uh, LeBon Probes and Mr. Kincaid was the uh, postmasters there. Uh, next one, and I've never seen, uh, I got these from Raleigh, the postmarks was a Baton Post Office, and that was out in the Baton area, and it's just also a small store, and, and it looks like uh, Mary Kelly and the Smiths were the postmasters there. Next one was Blackstone, and Blackstone, uh, a lot of these post offices, for some reason, they would change names, and I've got some of these in here, it's changed names at least three or four times. And uh, like I say, Blackstone, and it used to be Sealy, and I'll be talking about Sealy Post Office in a minute, but it was located down 268 almost, uh, it's probably about a mile from the Wilkes County line, but it was a small post office, and I've got a picture of it here I'd like to show you. And, of course, there is the uh, postmasters in uh, Harriet Shuford. Frank Shuford, the post office is still located on Frank's property, and I think the next one will show you the post office. And that's a little post office. It's right down 268, and most of these, like, were just one-room little sheds. And uh, if you look over in front of me here, when you walked in, it would have this little post office wooden box here, and in the back they'd have the letters, and then you ask for your letters, and they'd preach them through the little door to you. And like I say, y'all can look at that after the program. Okay. Next is Buck Shoals, and I've uh, never heard of Buck Shoals in Caldwell County. I did uh, a lot of research, and I finally come up, and the only Buck Shoals that makes mention of is in Hudson, and there's a Buck Shoals Street, and that it's too coincidental for that not to be the same place where this one was at, okay? Buffalo Cove, uh, if you're all familiar with the store that I just show you, showed you was Todd's Country Store, and that's where this post office was. And like I say, uh, uh, Miss Todd, which is now Miss Miller, that owned the store, and her family owned it and ran it, and she gave me these covers right here. There's a lot of post, uh, a lot of postmasters up there. The Cottrells, I, I knew several of the Cottrells. I knew several, several of the Robins that lived up in, in there, and then Mr. Miller, and then of course the Hawkins. And then I've got a picture of the uh, post office itself, the little store. And there's the store, and it was located in there for several years. I think 40, 50 years, 
until it finally closed. That is in Buffalo, go down 268 and then cut left and then go across the top of the mountain and it's just a little store up in Buffalo Cove. Okay, Catawba View and this was uh, down on the river and it was discontinued and like I say a lot of these were discontinued right after the war and like I say it stayed there from 1841 and everybody should know what January the 11th of 1841 that's when Caldwell County came into existence and it was at that time part of Burke County was taken off and part of Wilkes. Okay. Cedar Valley, uh, a lot of y'all know where Cedar Valley is. I got this one and like I say you get these you find these in the craziest places. This one here I bought from a guy in New Hampshire and how he got a letter from Caldwell <laughs> County in New Hampshire. And like I say, I, I think, you know, you pay $20, $30, whatever for them. But I purchased this in several years ago in Cedar Valley. You know where Cedar Valley, down 90 and in a little Cedar Valley church. There used to be a little store in that area. And like I say, that's where this was. And the postmasters down there were all Blairs. A lot of times it was in the same family because the store was owned by family. And then it'd be the daddy or the daughter and the son would take over. Okay. Seeley was an interesting little post office. And you just saw that uh, Blackstone took over for Seeley. It was in the same community. And like I say, it was up on 268. And it was closed in February. And I think this is on some of the Seeley was on some of the uh, Barnhart property up off of 268 that we know now. And the Joneses and the Cottrells, the Pipes and the Isbells, and uh, like I say, and it finally the name was changed in 1892 to Blackstone. And what was so sort of interesting about this was Clinton A. Seeley, and uh, the, who the uh, little post office was named after, and I'm just going to read this to you in, in, in case you can't see it, but uh, Clinton A. Seeley moved to Lenore at the end of the Civil War and became a regional director for the Freedmen's Bureau, and the uh, Freedmen's Bureau was the one that helped to free slaves after the war. He became very popular as a lawyer in Lenore, and he was elected one of the town's first mayors. Joe, I don't know if you've heard of Mr. Seeley, I'm sure you have. Okay. And uh, like I say, he later became a judge and a politician. He uh, married Emma Harper, which is James C. Harper's daughter, and was later, okay. And like I say, was later uh, became elected to the House of Representatives on the 46th Congress. And while he was serving as captain in Company C, the 2nd Minnesota Infantry, I can, uh, while it's recovering here, maybe I can fill in a little yeah. bit. Yeah. Uh, when the program's over, we actually have some uh, articles that belong to Clinton A. Silly over in our display case to your right rear. Uh, he's actually the first man uh, to hold the title of mayor for the Northern North Carolina. And there were probably, <coughs> probably some civil serv servants that preceded him uh, that served essentially as mayor but didn't hold that title. And as uh, Cecil was saying, what's so interesting about the man is that he's from New Hampshire. He commands a uh, Union regiment during the Civil War from Minnesota and comes here as an administrator of the Freedman's Bureau. Uh, James C. Harper's daughter, Emma, uh, became uh, attracted to Colonel Silly. Uh, her father, James C. Harper, being an ardent Confederate, didn't take too kindly to the notion of one of his daughters cozy enough to, as he called him, a Yankee. So, uh, young love does prevail, and uh, Clinton Silly became quite popular in this area through his law practice. He uh, also started a law school here in Lenore. Uh, at a house called Cherry Hill, which is off of Main Street in you know, Illinois, still stands. He represented a Confederate colonel by the name of George M. Folk on some, as Clint Silly said, trumped up charges and won the case. And this sets the deal for the local folks around here. Here was a Union colonel representing a Confederate colonel and winning the day for him. Uh, this propelled him into his political career, uh, and uh, eventually James C. Harper relented and gave permission for his daughter to uh, marry Clinton so, And uh, we hope here, uh, maybe next month, 
to do a special program and service for Clinton A. Silly. He's buried actually down in Hickory in Catawba County at Oakwood Cemetery uh, where he had spent the last few years of his life. Uh, and um, we had an article come in the museum right before the end of last year. It was a uh, Union grave marker. And uh, not having a whole lot of um, Union veterans in this vicinity to uh, honor with, we decided we'll install it at Clint Silly's grave down in Hickory in uh, May sometime. We'll keep you posted about that. I believe we're back up and around. And I think another uh, interesting thing I was going to tell you about, as far as I know, as far as a person living in Lenore, Jeff has seen only, uh, he actually won the Medal of Honor. He did. Medal of Honor recipient. He actually took a Confederate flag at the Battle of Chickamauga, Georgia in September of 1863. His own regiment, 2nd Minnesota, was faltering. And when Colonel Silly took the flag, he actually used it to rally his own regiment and lead it forward. So his Union regiment was going forward under Confederate colors. Okay, the next one is Coffee's. Coffee's was located, if you'll go to the end of the Abington Road and cut right down 90, there was a small store down there on the right after you uh, cut right on to 90, and it was on the right hand side of the road. And uh, I think that property is now owned by the uh, Greggs and it's, being, it's in nursery stock. But they had a small store there, and I've actually seen a copy of the a, a copy of a picture of that store, and that's where the little Edgemont train, when it came up, stopped and watered up. They had a water drop for it, and it actually filled full of water, and that's where Coffee's was. Okay. And like I say, it was only there for about four years, and that was right at the end of the railroad uh, era in that area, and uh, Mr. David Piercy was the postmaster. Okay, Coltsville is a very old post office. It was there from the beginning, and uh, like I say, sometimes these dates fool you because it only shows that it was a post office on January 11, 1841, but I think the uh, Coltsville post office was there several years before that, but it was in Burke County. So really it's older than it actually shows on paper because part of that time it was in uh, Burke County. And here's uh, a lot of the postmasters that's there. They had the, the Pewitts, the, Colette's, the Webb's, and like I say, you see a lot of Colette's and Lindsay's and Little's, and I think there's even another page of them besides it. Okay. Okay, uh, I have a couple composition books and some letters from a little uh, young lady, and her name was uh, Belle Green, and she was quite a poet, and I'd loved to research her some this sometimes and see what she made out of her life as an adult. But in her teenage years, I've got a lot of uh, stuff out of the old glass house up there and it has some of her composition books when she was a teenager. And she's got some of the poetry. I've, some of this stuff I've never heard of, but I'd just like for you to read this and I'll, I'll read what it says on it. And I just had a couple of them. And the first one says, a woman tempted man to eat, but I have never heard that Eve had anything to do with his drinking. <laughs> so I thought that was pretty good. The second, let's go back to this one, second one. If you can. The second one down there, and you could tell that she might have had her a boyfriend and was thinking about it because she's a teenager. And it's hard to read, but it says, "Keep a watch on the boys, girls, for boys are wonderful things. They are sweet like the bees, fresh honey, but like the bees have a terrible sting." <laughs> and I just thought that was so neat, and I love to read her uh, writings and stuff that she does. Okay. Next one was Copenhagen, and I've never found one on it. In uh, Copenhagen, I think that was out on uh, the Rocky Road. It was in the Gamble area. Okay. And then they had Cora, and Cora's moved to Burke County, and that was down on the county line, down next to the river. Dills Mills. Dills Mills is down in the Grace Chapel, Dudley Shoals area, and like I say, it was there at the beginning uh, when. Caldwell County came in existence, and it was there for about 25 years before it closed right after the Civil War. Dixon Post Office, if uh, you're familiar with the bill, was actually in, uh, Cedar, in the Cedar Valley. Cedar Valley, yes. And yeah, that was which my great grandpa. Oh, that's great, good. Great Maybe you can look and see if you can find a postmark off of some of your stuff. I'll run through it. Okay, I appreciate that. 
And like I say, there's lots of little things because that was a very populous area back then. And there's lots of uh, stuff going on with farming, and that's the reason a lot of these little post offices popped up. And lots, like I say, if there's not a post office label or nothing, and you just keep looking, you know, you, sometimes you can pinpoint a specific area of these in, and it's just like Dixon. And they always talk about in Mulberry going through Dixon Bottoms. And if you bottom out up there, you, know, you, you always hear Dixon Bottoms. Yes, absolutely. And that's where this little uh, post office was. And like I say, and the reason we can't find one of these, it's only in existence for what, just a few months, two or three months. Downsville. Uh, if y'all remember Coach Downs down in Hudson, uh, these were the Downses, and they lived down 90 right on the county line, right there uh, on the uh, county line. And it was established in 73 and went through 15, so it's there about 40 years. And uh, while we got this up, I'd like to mention this lady's name that's on there, Miss Kyler Bauer. She was, uh, lived a long life, and she never threw away a single letter. She was quite the lady for writing letters. And uh, when she passed years ago, and I think it's in the 40s, she lived to, but she was sort of a social out, and I've got letters and stuff, and uh, like I say, every letter that I've got, it has the full letter in it, so you can read what she was talking about. And uh, her family must have been pretty high up because her brother, and I'll talk about him in a few minutes, was a United States congressman here from Caldwell County. And uh, I, I think there were several of them, and I know Jim Brawhill was too. Then Downsville Postmasters, and like I say, there's, most of them are Downs, and then there's a few Browns and there's Flowers, okay? Draco, and if you go to uh, down 90, Taylor's State Line, on the left and cut to the left, that's the Draco area, and that's where it's from. And you can see, still see Catterbauer, and like I say, this lady uh, from Wilkesboro that inherited all her stuff called me one day. She said, I understand that you uh, are collecting postal history from Caldwell County. And she said, I've got about 10 or 12 boxes full of letters down here, and you go through and you have whatever you want. So I went down, and like I said, it's been several years ago, but I was just fortunate that somebody was, you know, wanting to donate some stuff for the history because, you know, I'll, I'll end on keeping it, and hopefully one of these days when I pass, it'll pass on to the museum here. And there's the Draco, another postmark. And there's the Draco post office. If you're uh, familiar with going around Draco, you see the little green sign that says Ginger Cascades. If you've ever been down to the Girl Scout camp, when you cut in, this old building's on the left, and that's the actual post office, okay? And that's the front door. And then the next one's the inside, and like I say, it's very similar to what you'd have set up over here. And you just had little cubby holes, you had your mailings in there, and the people would come in. And like I say, this is a, uh, these little stores meant so much to the community. I remember when I was small and growing up in Whitman, we had the ideal supermarket and the quality supermarket, and maybe a couple more around Lenore. And if one of them closed, I can remember my parents saying them many a time, my mom would say to dad, and she'd say, Willie, something must be bad wrong, the store's closed. And it always was, is a death or something happened. And like I say, you could walk into that store within just a minute, you know, to everybody that was sick in the community, you know, to everybody that needed help or anything else. And like I say, it was a, their little social area. And the reason they tried to have so many post offices, they liked to keep them three to five miles apart. And of course, the two, the two main modes of travel you had in the 1800s, you had you was either walking or riding a horse. So you could, you could either walk to it or ride a horse to it. And like I say, uh, I read somewhere last night that usually it took uh, about four weeks to get a letter from the East Coast to the West Coast at that time. So everything was slow, but you would get these letters. Okay, Edgemont, and it was located, you know, up in the Mortimer area, up Wilson's Creek. And it was established as post office back in 1907 and went to 82. So it's been there a very long time, about 75 years. And there's all the postmasters that was there. Most of them are Greg, Chris, the Coffees. Those are very familiar names up in that area. Robert Archie. Archie, uh, I've actually met him before he passed away years ago. And he ran the store for years and years and lived in the community. And I think I got a picture of him. There's the old uh, Coffee's General Store, and like I say, most of these were old general stores. You went to it, and inside was the post office. And then the next one, I think I got a picture of the cubby holes again. And then next, 
Okay, and then we'll go to uh, Elkville. In Elkville, if you go down 268 right before you get to Wilkes County <coughs> Line, if you'll cut left, and that's called going up Elk Creek. And there's a little post office there. Okay, Emmanuel, uh, if you go down 18, it's about where the uh, country club is, where you pull in right there going down uh, 18. On the right, there's a little store in that area. It used to be all, that used to be a dairy years ago, but uh, that's where Emmanuel was. Finley, that was located in northern Caldwell County, and most, most of you know Finley as being called Richlands today. And uh, I knew Jess Bolick. His dad used to be the surveyor here in Lenoir. He's right on the main square up here. But that was uh, Jess's son. And like I say, it went out in 1944. Most of these, like I say, it stayed out 45 years, but it seemed like right after the war, everybody wanted to start combining them. And I guess it's trying to save money too. Fort Defiance. Uh, it's a lot of history on Fort Defiance. You all know about it. Uh, did a little research. <clears throat> The first post offices that came about in North Carolina started in 1795. And that was the Morgan and Post Office and the Wilkes Post Office. So if you had anything you wanted to mail, you had to go to them. And in 1795, there was only about 200 post offices in the whole United States. Fort Defiance, even though this shows uh, that Lenore, Fort Defiance started in 1841, it was not actually, it was it was not actually started in 1841, it started in 1805. It, but at that time it was Wilkes County, remember? So it's been there, for, it, it was already there for years when 1841, when it became Caldwell County. This one was, uh, it shows being free up there and it says Thomas Lenore, postmaster at Fort Defiance. And then it says on the left, uh, April the 10th, 1843, and you see the free stamp on it. Uh, up until it's about 1854, 1855, somewhere in that area, postage was free. You could send the letters, there's no cost. And then at that time they said, man, this ain't making us no money. And then they started adding stamps. And, and back then when they first started, it was so much per mile. First 10 miles was like so much. And then if it went to 30 miles, it went up to dime. And then it just, the farther you went, the more it was. This is the oldest uh, letter I have, and you can see the postmasters, Thomas Lenore, Rufus Lenore, and then uh, Joneses, and Rufus, Rufus Lenore took it back over in 1880, and then it's discontinued in 1880. And this is a letter to Walter Lenore, and this one's dated uh, 12th October 1842, and Caldwell County had been only in existence less than a year at this time, or about a year. Okay. And of course, this is uh, Fort Defiance. And I've always heard that there's another a building adjacent to it, just a small little cubby hole type store, and, uh, and like I say, the post office was located in it. Okay, game well, this is where the area I live in, and uh, there's a lot of history out in the game well too, and this was established the post office in 1881, but here again, it wasn't really because there's two post offices in game well for it, and they just changed names, and I'll be talking to you about them too. Okay, here's the postmasters, and this was one, uh, Mr. Crump was sending it to the Gamble Post Office, and uh, I've heard, know y'all have heard of Lucius Tuttle and uh, Finley Coffee. I've actually got a picture of him, and I'll show him to you. And that's Mr. Finley, and uh, he was there from 48, or he lived from 48 to 37, but he was Gamble's first postmaster. Glenn Burney, this one was hard to find too, and uh, if you go up, Abington Road, where Greasy Creek crosses, there's a little store right there, and that, for some reason, that, that was called Glen Burney. And uh, I've always heard of the, we used to go bowling down Glen Burney Lanes, and I don't know if that was any relationship, but that's only two Glen Burneys I've ever heard from in the county. And it went out in 1903. Globe Post Office is another old post office. It was there years before 1841, but at that time it was Burke County. And like I say, I always refer back to some of these old letters. They have the most beautiful handwriting because these people, there's, there were no computers like we do to type anything, and everything was longhand. And then if you thought whoever you was writing to was very important, you'd always put Esquire after it because this is to uh, DP Mess. Good, 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 yeah. Yeah. And then uh, here's the stamps and uh, 
I have some of the stamps and I'll show you if you want to look up here on the table and uh, like I say this was the hand stamp. This is the one that's given to me from Edgemont. I got the hand stamp from it. I got the one from Attico. I got the one from Collettesville. I've got the little hand stamp where you stamped it from the Globe. I've got the one from Rufus which is in Mulberry and we'll get to in a little bit and also Upton which was right above the Globe. But all of these are the hand stamps where they actually did it, okay? And there's the Globe Post Office in 1937, and like I say, it, in 1837, excuse me, and that was in Burke County at that time, and it's just a big old store up there for all the community. Greg, well, I mentioned this a little while ago, and Greg was actually uh, in Carey's Flat. If you go straight through the Globe and like coming up toward Grandfather Mountain, you'll get up there at the top and it says Greg, North Carolina, also Carey's Flat, so it went by both names. <coughs> And that was, uh, here's Grandin. This is the only Grandin uh, label known in existence. Uh, uh, a doctor down, uh, Dr. Jackson, he's a veterinarian. He collects postal history from Wilkes County. And uh, he called me one day and we do stuff back and forth before we find something. And he said, I found one. I've got one from Grandin I'm going to give you. And this, like I say, once nobody's been registered, well, we'll send them to Raleigh. So if you look on the uh, North Carolina uh, postal history, on the uh, internet, it'll come up, but it'll be this postmark because that's the only one known. And like I say, there was, uh, that was at the Grandin Mill or Grandin Lumber Company. And back in uh, 1914, Edgar Howell, that's on his property down there, but 1814, there was uh, the huge flood come through and, and it washed almost away. Okay, two years later, they tried to regroup and build everything back. And here it came again, another huge flood, and washed the mill and all the lumber away again. Okay? So that was in 1916. So if you look back on history a year later, we sort of know what happened in uh, 1917, World War I happened. And like I say, in that, within two years after that, there was no money left for the mill. Nobody had any money and everything. Like I say, so it just went defunct. I, I see that it's looks like it's metered instead of having a stamp on it. Uh, that's just that's just to cancel over, over on the red part. That was it like yeah. It, it happened. It wasn't. It was just another hand stamp. Oh, yeah, yeah. There's no meters back then. Okay, and uh, there's the postmasters. Okay. Granite's uh, old post office, but it started out as granite. And then it went to Love Lady, okay? And then Love Lady shut down and it went back to Granite. And then the next one, go ahead. And then from Granite, it went to Granite Falls. So they changed the name there three times. It went from Granite to Love Lady, from Love Lady to Granite, and then they changed the name to Granite Falls. So there's been three different post offices, same place, but, uh, I'm not quite sure, uh, I've never seen shorthand, but on the top of the label up there, I can make out the 14th and the 23 when that was sent, but it looks like they used a little shorthand even back then on that label. And there's lots of granite postmasters. Like I say, it's just uh, next. Okay, Green Rock is a very interesting little post office. These are the only known uh, letters from Green Rock Post Office in existence. I've got, I think I have three of them, and this came from Mr. Catter Bowers estate years ago, the lady gave it me from Wilkesboro, and these are on the state historical from the postal stuff in Raleigh because they had never seen one. And if you go off of 268, like you're going to Buffalo Cove, uh, if you hit the flats up there, a little bit on the left, there's a Green Rock Baptist Church and right at the entrance where that went into, there used to be a little store, and that was Green Rock. And like I say, it was there for about three years. And uh, I've never heard of any menaces around here. That's an interesting name. We have some buried in our church cemetery. Oh, that's good. You might want to look and see if one's Monroe. It could be. And the uh, next one is gunpowder. Could I yes. You? Huh? Since, since we're talking about postal history, it might be nice to... <laughs> yeah. Appreciate the post for the door. Yeah. Our dedicated delivery lady here yeah. is in your everyday delivery mail too.
I bet she's glad there's not 76 post offices now in the county. Yeah, yeah. This is this is gunpowder, and uh, of course gunpowder is down on in Granite Falls area, and it was transferred to Granite Falls when it closed in 1902. And there was postmasters, and then Happy. I'll talk to you a minute about Happy. Has anybody ever heard of Happy, North Carolina? Happy Caldwell County. Happy. H A P P Y. I've never heard of it either till I got this, but I finally located it, and on an old old map it showed where it was. And if you go up to Collinsville and uh, go on up and hit the old Johns River Road, and go to about the second or third bridge, you'll see. Next. Happy North. If you've ever been to where the Mug House is on Old John's River Road. I think he said it's about 25,000 25, mugs he's got. But there used to be a little store there and this was called Happy. I wish they still had that area. because I, I like the name of it, okay? Harper's Store. Uh, me and Joe was mentioning this a while ago. I think Harper's Store was the predecessor to Lenore Post Office. And I think it was out in uh, Firefield, like what they call the old house there. And then it started before January 1841. It was back in the early 1800s when Harper Store was the post office and stuff. And then 1841, it was changed to Little Nowhere. And here's Harper Store, June the 3rd of 1841. Okay. Heartland, like I was telling you, these names changed so much. And like I say, I'll go ahead and mention it. There was a Tuttle's Crossroads in uh, the Gamewell area. And if you know where Rudisil Store is, you go behind Tuttle Educational State Forest, you'll go to the intersection, there's Tuttle Store. On the left is Old Courtney property, and there's a store there, and that was Heartland. Before it was Heartland, that was considered Tuttle's Crossroads. Same little place, but they changed names, okay? In Heartland Postmasters, you know, of course the Tuttle's, and then it's on the Courtney property, and then the Coffees, okay? And um, Miss Williams, I found this, was the last contract mail carrier in Caldwell County. She carried the mail between Heartland and Lenore horseback prior to uh, 1900. There was only nine mailboxes over her entire route from uh, Heartland there to Lenore. And I thought what was interesting, uh, I wished I had a better picture of her. This photograph was taken in 1942 on her 100th birthday. So that means she, she was born in 1842-ish. Uh, and if you add maybe 40 years, probably right after the Civil War, 1870s, when she would have been delivering this mail. And she, uh, Miss Williams actually lived till she was 103 years old, delivering mail on horseback at that time. Okay, ha Hazeldale, uh, this is another one down in Granite. High Brighton, have you ever heard of High Brighton Post Office? High Brighton Post Office was about where you could cut down 90 off of 18. There's a little store there. I've never seen, and there's never been one recorded. And it was there for uh, 16 years. Surely somewhere out there there's a High Brighton label that I could, you know, collect or if somebody sees one. And like I say, the next one was High Post Office, and that was in Gregg, and that was up in Coltsville area. Okay, Hobart. It's very close to where I live out in the Gamble area, and that was uh, a lot of local people rem remember people talking in Cole County about being out in the Piney area. But that was actually Hobart, and if you'll go north of where I just told you where Rudisil's store is, that is the Hobart area. Holtz Claw, we just mentioned a while ago, was uh, about Draco. Go down 90, cut left to go to Draco, go a little bit farther, there's a Hostclaw Creek and there's a little store out there and that was Hostclaw. <coughs> Houck, that was a predecessor to uh, Mortimer and uh, like I say it was there for looks like about uh, 18 years and then the name was changed to Mortimer. Hudson, uh, that's my old alma mater, went to Hudson High School before Hudson it was Hudsonville. Uh, a lady recently told me that uh, here in Lenore that she has one, her mother has a Hudsonville label stamped on uh, her one of her letters and she's going to let me have it. And there's lots of postmasters at Hudson. You see a lot of the, the first one was David Hudson. I'm sure that's who that area was named after the Hudsons. And it came down to see the Hickmans, the Thronbergs, 
And like I say, all we can go to the Hickmans again, and like I say, uh, a lot of those were early settlers here in the county. Hupburn. I thought that was sort of interesting. Like I say, a lot of these abbreviations on here I've never figured out, but I figured out where Hupburn came from. Hutton Bourbonis was one of the big lumber companies here, and up in the, that was up in the Mortimer area, and they started logging up there, and they had so many of their loggers and people that lived there year round. They had to start and bring their families up, and they had to have a post office. Johns River, uh, I think if you go to Attico and cut left like you're going out and you get that's sort of John's River area out in there. There's a little store out there. Uh, Jumbo is about where Joe was talking about uh, the Grace Chapel area. It's on the map here. It shows Jumbo Post Office. And that was a store and I actually met uh, the man that ran the store's daughter. And she was an older lady, but she said that she remembered her daddy running that store and it was Jumbo. Okay. <coughs> Kings Creek. This is another from ran from 1850 to 1955 so it was our 105 years and like I say it's another old post office and everybody knows where the store in Kings Creek was and around media on the left past it was the post office in the Laxtons that was a familiar name in the Kings Creek area with Paliers and uh, all of these up here you see that it was closed as post office under CSA times and then it went to federal for about a year, and then it just went to regular post office. At the end of this, I've got, I'll sort of tell you why that came about, because if you think about during the, uh, when the Confederate dissolved from the Union, they wouldn't use the Union stamps, so they had to come up with their own postal, postal stuff, and I'll, I'll talk to you about that a little later. Coombs, uh, that was done in Kings Creek area. It was there just for a sh very short time, and I know several of the Hedricks that lived down in that uh, right there next to Kings Creek Baptist Church. Ledgerwood, it was located, anybody knows where this old building is? Patterson School, I think you call it. And uh, that was in 1911, established until 1954, and I'll tell you a little more history as we go through it on the next slide. And here's just another stamp in 1843, that's a receipt for some insured mail. And Ledgewood Postmasters, uh, I'm sure a lot of you talked about Cap Weesey. He was, worked there at school and he was there in 1954 when it was closed. Okay. Lenore, of course it was right here located in Central and it was established in 1841. And like we said a while ago, it came from Harper's store. Okay. And there's all the Lenore post office of course, the first one was James Harper, and that's when it was at his house before, so when it moved to Lenore, so of course, he was still the postmaster until 20 more years. You see another name right there, you come across the Blues, okay? And there's uh, the old Lenore Post Office. I talked to Willie Hout this week, and uh, Willie is a very interesting old gentleman that lives out, and he's 97 years old, and he said, Cecil, he said, I, I was talking to him about postal history because he does some of this too. And he said, I was actually there when they put the arch up over the top. He said, I was there as a young boy. He said, I was probably eight or nine years old. And he said, me and my daddy's uptown one day and he's lifting that up and putting arches on there. And he was there and watched them. Okay. Little River. Of course, that's down in the Alexander County line. That's a little river. It runs beside the road down there. Love Lady. I've got this one. Uh, I guess about a year ago, and I think I got this one uh, out of Maine. A guy had it on eBay, and uh, I bought it from him. And it's so interesting. I've got two different doctors, and like I say, this is Dr. S. G. H. Jones and Son, but both of them have the same thing printed on their envelopes, and it says, Practicing Physicians and Dealers in General Merchandise. So, <laughs> so they had a little general store, plus they had the doctor's office, okay? Love Lady, that was down on the river and it was changed to Grand Falls in 1887, starting in uh, these cancellations, if you look, all of them are different. This is called a star cancellation over right when they killed a stamp and that means you couldn't use it again. They called, they're called killers, but that was a star. Okay, McCall, I've never heard of McCall Post Office, but I know it was right there going down 90, uh, about where the new little school is on the left. There's a little store there and it was called McCall. 
in Meadow Hills. That was down in the Boomer area, and now it's in Wilkes. And of course, the uh, Moore Post Office, that was up in uh, Mulberry area, and it was changed and went to Rufus, which is also in Mulberry. Mortimer, and like I say, it was changed from Halk, used to be Halk Post Office, and I showed you the Halk before, and it was there for several years, and like I say, and then the mail was transferred to Edgemont in 1919. And here's some of the Mortimer Postmasters. And like I say, a lot of these, if you look back on this, you'll tie it in a little bit, because there's uh, William O. Mortimer, and that's where they got to name that family, the Mortimer family. The Duprees, I never heard of those. A uh, gentleman here, back here, Mr. Bolick, he actually showed me a Muttons. He has a Muttons. And Muttons was located, I tried to show it right here, but if you'll go up Plainwell Beach Road when you get to Little John's Motorbike Shop, and then there's a big old Little John's Rock Store on the left, used to be. If you'll go right down the hill before you get to Low Water Bridge, what we call it where it crosses the John's River, that was the Muttons area. And then, of course, North Catawba is one out there. And it was moved to Happy Home. Do you, anybody recognize Happy Home? That's Valdez. That was a predecessor. It used to be called Happy Home, and now it's called Valdez. And then there's Naomi, and that was moved to uh, Avery County, and that's very close to Carrie's Flat up there. There's another little store. Okay, Patterson, that's a very old post office, too, and it closed in 1855, or it was established in 1855, and it's still there. So it's been our hundred, way over a hundred years. Okay. See James C. Harper instead. Of James Harper was the postmaster up there, and then uh, you will see all the names you might be familiar with. Some of them down at the very bottom is John H. Nelson, which was my uh, great great grandfather's brother, and they were all from Patterson area because my mom was a Nelson. Okay. And then here, I asked you a while ago. A lot of these is from Kyder Bauer, which I'll tell you was a social out here. So then Lenore, <clears throat> and this was a letter to her brother, and it says Mr. W. H. Bauer and then Miss Kyder Bauer. Okay, next. William Horton Bauer, which this letter came from, was a lawyer, legislator, legislator and congressman. In 1882, Bauer was elected General Assembly from Caldwell County. 1885, he was appointed solicitor of the uh, 10th Judicial District by governor. And next year was elected without opposition for a four-year term as solicitor. In 1892, Mr. Bauer was elected as a Democrat to represent the 8th District in the 53rd Congress. Okay. Now, I thought this was pretty interesting. This was in a letter, uh, one of the Bauer's letters from Kiter, and this was uh, the tax notice that uh, M. H. Tuttle, which was from Gamewell, he was sheriff at that time, and I think... Uh, it tells in 1884, but it says, uh, I will attend to the following times and places to receive taxes. So the sheriff, you went around to the country stores and you collected taxes for the county. And I've always heard that the more taxes he collected, the more salary he got. So it's really up to him to get, get that because he wanted that tax money because it paid his salary. But it says, he's, let me go back just a second. It's, uh, he is at Kelly's on uh, Monday, February 9th. And he's going to be at Jones' store, Petra Mill's store, Oxford, uh, Laxton's, Piney Grove. And then there's a little scribble in there, and it says that he's going to be spending the night at Kyder, Bauer, uh, Kyder Bauer's house on the 15th, which is Saturday night and Sunday, with her family. And then he'd continue his thing around Globe and John River and Harlan. Okay. Pearland, have you ever heard of that? That was granite. There's sawmills. It's right this side, but that was actually sawmills. It's what we know it today, and the name was changed to Sawmill in um, 1927. And then you had Petra Mills, Petra Mills Road. It's just a small store down there. Okay. Road Hiss, it's still in existence. It started in 1901. Here's the postmaster from Road Hiss. The Rhodes, and that's where Road Hiss came from. Mr. Rhodes, the Collingers, the Glasses. Okay. Ripito, <clears throat> this was uh, actually talked to a lady that lived in the house where Ripito Post Office was. Of course, that's going out Colony Springs Road on the right at Stoplight, where you can cut back and go to the prison, Hudson Prison Camp area. Right before you get to it, there's a 
man that works on cars and paints cars and stuff. There's a little auto place. There's an old house that sits up on the left side of him, and that was Ripito, and of course behind him is Ripito Mountain. Okay. Risden, <clears throat> that's in the northwest, and I told you about this, and then the, it, it was right there, same, it's in almost the same area with Rufus. If you know where Rufus Baptist Church is in Mulberry, there's another little store there, and it's called Risden. And there's Postmaster, of course, there's coffees everywhere up there, okay? And there's Rufus, and that's where uh, Risden was changed to Rufus, and it's just another little storefront up there. <coughs> Rufus Postmaster, of course, the moors and the masts. And then Sardis <coughs> was down in the Hudson area. Of course, there's Sardis, the old church down there. That's where a lot of my ancestors are uh, put to rest. I thought this was pretty. It was uh, uh, Miss Thronberg uh, out in the game area gave it, this to me, and it was a sawmill, and this was to one of her sisters. The letter was written, but it's just Happy New Year, and it's a postcard, and you turn it over, and it's got a pretty little girl there playing the birds. <coughs> and of course, there's the stamp for sawmill, and it started out, <coughs> you can see on top left, it started out as sawmill, and then it went to sawmill, and then after sawmill, it was changed into Parallel in uh, 1924. And I don't know, you'd think since the name of the area now is Sawmill, it would stay Parallel because it was Parallel after sawmill, but I don't know why it did that. <clears throat> of course, our story, Postmaster, and then the Tab, that's up in the Globe area, just another little store. And then Tyndall, same area, just another little storefront, and it was moved to Coxville Post Office in 1911. <clears throat> These are two uh, interesting ones. A lady whose grandfather used to be postmaster at, uh, in Alexander County I used to work with, and she said, we found a bunch of old letters, said if you want to look through them, said I'll bring them to you, so I did, and there was a tozo. And the only time I've ever heard of the word tozo, and I looked it up in history, and I remember it when uh, the United States was attacked during uh, at Pearl Harbor during World War II on the Japanese fleet ship where all the planes flew off of. That commander on that ship was Tozo. He was a Japanese commander of that ship was a Tozo. And that's the only time I've ever heard that. But I thought it might have been, you know, a lot of these old people, you know, would have nicknames like Tommy Joe or something. And it probably something just shortened. But this was right past Kings Creek School on the right, about a mile down the road on the 18. <coughs> Go back one more time, I'll have to tell them something. <clears throat> before, before there were the hand stamps, like this, everything was manuscript, and that's called a manuscript because it didn't, these hadn't been invented yet in the late 1800s and from up to 1910. Some of the stores didn't have these, or they started them and didn't start, but this is Edgemont I have here, and then the next one shows the regular hand stamp after the God the same year. That means that the store just started and they hadn't had time to get them a hand stamp, so they handwritten it, okay? Tuttle's Crossroads, this is a predecessor to Gamewell Post Office and also to Heartland Post Office. And this is right there at Rudisil Store out in the Gamewell area. Tuttle's, it's Marshall Courtney, of course Courtney's on the land there. Upton, I've got the Upton one right here. <clears throat> A little stamp, and like I say, it was there for years, from 1884 to 1954, so it's there 60 some years, 70. And there's the postmasters, and like I say, you can just about look and see who lives there or who, who either owns the store, and I think Mr. Crisp and the Estes is on that store, okay? Valmead, you know, as close as this is, and the Valmead was there for nine years, I've still never been able to find a Valmead. <clears throat> label as far as stamp being, and this one here was going to Valmead. But like I say, if anybody knows anybody from Valmead that might have one, I'd love to have one for the collection. <coughs> it was up there, it's somewhere on the right across from the school is what I've always been told. It's just a little storefront there next to the Valmead Elementary School. So there's some out there, I got this one off the internet, it came out the uh, out of Raleigh, but uh, Ralph Tuttle and Mr. White and the Hartleys Lots of hard isn't that way. Of course, my old hometown, uh, Mom always said I was from Treeland. That was the name of Whitman before it came in. 
and uh, history always tells you <clears throat> that the two prominent families back in 1800s when that area was <clears throat> started was the Whites and the Nelsons, which my mom was the Nelson. <clears throat> so they took the W-H-I-T off of Y and the N-E-L off of Nelson, they quit them. Okay, and there's the uh, Postmasters. Actually remember when I was growing up with Sybil Shaw, and, and that says the mail to Lenore in 56, but actually uh, Lenore or Whitmore Post Office stayed over there as a branch of Lenore Plum up in the 1980s because I remember using that post office quite often. Whittenburgs, if you uh, go over in Alexander County, you go to Whitten Whittenburg Landing and uh, they're on the river, but it's right back his side and they closed it in 1847. Yakin Valley, it was there from 84 to uh, 1953, and I think up and down 268 there's about eight post offices in that area because it was really built up back then, okay? <coughs> We're about to get to end it. And there's the postmasters at Yakin Valley, and of course that's right cutting down 268, right there about where the old store is now, okay? Okay, this is very interesting. I bought this one from a guy in Charlotte. And this letter is addressed to a Mr. T.B. Lenore in Yakin Valley, which will be Thomas or some of his family. But uh, scribbling on the left, if you can see it in the, in the docket, and I just wrote what it was. The note was to Thomas B. Lenore, and it reads, Hotel site, offer expired, no land sold. Top of High Brighton Mountain, $600. They was wanting to put a hotel up there, and they offered it for sale for $600, and nobody took it. And uh, you can see this was in uh, 1892. But I thought that was just an interesting part of the history. <clears throat> After you got all your little post offices at the country stores, you also had two post office <clears throat> ways to mail stuff in the county, and these were RPOs, and that's Railroad Post Office. The first one was, was the Lenore Lancaster, which is Lancaster, South Carolina. Railroad train ran up and ran to Lenore, and you can send your mail out by RPO, which is Railroad Post Office. The second one was Edgemont and Lancaster RPO, Railroad Post Office. And the next one I thought was interesting, this is a postcard, and I just flipped it over and took the back side. And it says the Carolina and Northwestern Railroad and the Caldwell and Northern Railroad. And it says Lenore, Blowing Rock, Linville, City, Pinola, Edgemont, by Gastonia and Lincoln. It says 100 miles of beautiful turnpikes and then uh, 2,045 feet altitude and principal mountain peaks, 5964, which is the top of Grandfather Mountain. But it shows scenes for Blowing Rock in the areas. And like I say, I thought that was a good little postcard just of Lenore area. What year was that? That was had to be in the uh, early uh, 1907s, 8s, because the, post, the uh, railroad train quit right in that area. And you did, this, this is the ones that you did not want to receive because this was bad news. These ran from about, I've seen them from about 1895 to about 1912 or something other, but if you got one that had the black circle around, you knew somebody had died. So these were called mourning envelopes, and you didn't want, you didn't want to receive those. <coughs> This is called, and uh, uh, Norton Jeff might even want to elaborate some more on this, but this is called a North Carolina Provisional Stamp. And uh, I told you when, when the Civil War broke out and uh, the South <coughs> left the Union, <coughs> they were using the same stamps all over the United States at that time. So when they dissolved that and they became <coughs> the Confederate States, they had no postage. So Lenore, which this is, James Harper's <clears throat> son, do the next one, it tells a little history on it. Maybe I left it off, I'll tell you about it. I got it right here. But anyway, he became, uh, I'll just read this to you. <clears throat> when the uh, Confederate straight states withdrew from the Union, they no longer used a regular government issue stamps. In order to continue the mail in these states, the provisional stamps were created and used for a short time until the Confederate states created their own stamps. James Harper served as postmaster of the Lenore Post Office from 1841 to 1861, which started the Civil War. His son, George Washington Finley, G.W.F. 
Harper was assistant postmaster and according to written affidavits was responsible for carving a wooden die and making this provisional stamp and they said he did it out of a piece of power wood but it's a stamp like this but instead of being rubber he actually hand carved it so it would stamp out Lenore NC five cent paid stamp and approximately 29 Lenore NC provisional covers like this still exist and at that time they made 500 but there's only 29 in existence and a friend of mine actually has one of those 29 and I have that with me today if anybody wants to see it. Okay. It's extremely rare. It is. Uh, and George Washington Finley Harper specifically talks about that carving that, that uh, design in his personal diary and within eight months he would enter Confederate service and rise to become the major of the 58th North Carolina. Something else interesting about this, I actually talked to Jim Harper. He used to work up the bank with my wife years ago and he's retired and I think he might have, uh, does he live in Charlotte area now? Jim Harper. He told me he's actually seen that die that that was made out of and he said it was in the London Museum over in England. And we don't know how it got over there because everybody says it was lost and never found, but evidently he said he's actually went over there and requested to see it and they actually brought it out and showed it to him. So uh, I think it'd be interesting if there's some way our negotiators with the government could get that thing back because it needs to come back to Caldwell County. It's interesting. And I appreciate it. And like I say, if there's any questions, I'll be glad to uh, answer any way I can. But like I say, this is something that's just interesting to me. And like I say, it's just a part of Caldwell County history. Thanks, Hello, I'm Bill Tate with Caldwell County Now and Then, also in association with our local museum, the Caldwell Heritage Museum. If you appreciate what we do, please make a donation to our museum, the Caldwell Heritage Museum, 112 Vaden Street, Lenore, North Carolina, 28645. Thank you. Mm -hmm.